All right, in this video, I'm going to look at finding a power series solution of a differential equation. So here we're going to solve the differential equation y double prime plus y equals 0 using a power series. So certainly not all differential equations need a power series, and I think this would be one where you could probably do some other stuff. But again, just sort of a basic example to illustrate the idea. And the point is, you do see a lot of differential equations where there's not explicit solutions. Uh, there's not explicit techniques on how you go about finding a solution. So, so what do we do when there's not a, a nice uh, technique? Well, what we do, one technique we can use, is we can come up with a power series solution. So that's the idea. OK, so we're going to assume that there's a solution of the form uh, y equals n equals 0 to infinity c sub n times x raised to the n. So there's our power series. So the first thing I'm going to do is calculate y double prime. And I already know what y equals, right? That's given to us. So once I have a power series uh, representation of y double prime, we're going to substitute all of that stuff in. OK, so if we take the first derivative, we would have c sub n times, OK, so the derivative of x raised to the n, that's just going to be n multiplied by x raised to the power of n minus 1. Notice I could still start this at 0 because, you know, if we, I'm not going to do that because if we start at 0, notice the first term is going to be 0 when we expand it out. So I'm going to start this at n equals 1 because that's going to be my first non-zero term. Well, hey, I can take another derivative. If we do that, we would have c sub n multiplied by n x raised to the power of n minus 1, the derivative of that, we'll get n minus 1 times x raised to the power of n minus 2. And in this case, if we start at 0 or at 1, those, uh, the, when we expand, those, those terms will be 0. So I'm going to start at n equals 2. That's my first non-zero term. OK, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take uh, my starting expression and my expression for y double prime. And I'm just going to substitute those back into my differential equation. OK, so now if we substitute this stuff in, we'll have from n equals 2 to infinity, c sub n multiplied by n multiplied by n minus 1 raised to the power, excuse me, multiplied by x raised to the power of n minus 2. So there's our y double prime plus y, which is n equals 0 to infinity, c sub n multiplied by x raised to the n, all of that is equal to 0. In order to manipulate things and uh, to be able to work with things, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make these, I want the, the series to start at the same place. So hey, this one's starting at 2, this one's starting at 0. I'm going to make the first one start at n equals 0. So what I'm going to do, I'm basically going to subtract 2 from my index okay, to compensate everywhere that there is an n in my formula. Everywhere there's an n in my formula, I'm going to have to add 2. Okay, So making this start at, at a value too smaller, you're going to have to make all these start at something too larger to make it the same thing. That's the whole idea. Uh, I often get questions about, you know, how, how are you able to change that? Well, again, that's the whole idea. And you, if you're never sure if you've done it correctly, you know, put in n equals 2, you'll get something. Put in n equals 3, you'll get something. Once you change them, expand it out again and make sure that you get the exact same thing. If you didn't, you're doing something wrong. But this is the basic idea. Whatever you subtract from the index, you're going to have to add to all the ends. All right, so let's do that. So now we've got n equals 0 to infinity. Instead of c sub n, well, again, I have to add 2, so I'm going to get c sub n plus 2. Instead of n, I'm going to have n plus 2. Here I would have n plus 2 minus 1, which is going to leave me with n plus 1. And then I would have x raised to the power of n plus 2 minus 2. Hey, that's just going to give us x raised to the power of n. Now, since both of these start at 0, I can group all of these together using one summation. So I can add the other series, our c sub n x to the n. I can just throw that in with my first series. OK, 
Okay, so that's the benefit. That's the reason why we start them, um, you know, at the same place. We can now group them together. The next thing I'm going to do here is, well, hey, they both have an x raised to the power of n. I'm going to factor that out. So we have c sub n plus 2 multiplied by n plus 2, n plus 1, plus c sub n multiplied by x raised to the n equals 0. Okay, so again, we've got an equation here, right? We want this to equal 0. Well, I guess we could make x equal 0, right? If, if x was equal to 0 in our original, uh, our original series, well, then the whole series would equal 0. And certainly, the second derivative of 0 plus 0 would equal 0. So, you know, that would be true, but it's a, it's a trivial, boring solution, okay? And we're not get, getting anything useful out of that. So, if we make the assumption that x doesn't equal 0, well, if x doesn't equal 0, for all of this stuff to equal 0, this expression would have to equal 0. So all of this would have to equal 0 to get a solution. I mean, if they're not all, you know, if they don't all somehow work out to be 0, right, you're going to have some term left over, x to the first or x to the second or x to the third or some constant. And again, that's clearly not going to equal 0. Alrighty, so, well, that tells us now we can look at this expression, c sub n plus 2 times n plus 2 times n plus 1 plus c sub n equals 0. So now we're going to turn our attention to this expression. Alrighty, what I'm going to do is I'm going to solve, I'm going to solve for c sub n plus 2. And eventually what I want to do is I just want to come up with a, a nice way to express these, these values, these c sub n's. That's going to be the goal. So I could subtract c sub n over, and then I could divide by n plus 2, n plus 1, and we would be left with c sub n plus 2 on the left side. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start I'm just going to start substituting in values of n and I'm going to try to spot a pattern. Okay, that's all I'm going to do now. And I'm going to write out a couple of these and then you can check my last couple and hopefully we'll see a nice little pattern. So if we substitute in n equals 0 into this expression, well, on the left side, we would have c sub 2. On the right side, we would have negative c sub 0. And then again, if we plug in n equals 0, we would be left with 2 times 1 in the denominator. I am not going to multiply out the denominators because you'll see that a lot of times, and in this example for sure, a lot of times you end up getting a factorial. Okay, So if you multiply it out, you know maybe you won't recognize that it's a factorial. So if we plug in n equals 1, okay, we would have, well, c sub 3 on the left side. We would have negative c sub 1, and again, if we plug in n equals 1, we would have 3 times 2. We could even multiply by 1, but notice, hey, this is 3 factorial in the denominator. All right, so far, so good. We're having fun. If we substitute n equals 2, we'll get that c sub 4 equals, well, negative c sub 2. And again, if I plug in 2, we'll have 4 times 3. But now we've got, we've already figured out an expression for c sub 2. So I'm just going to substitute that in. So if we do that, well, we've got negative, uh, well, if we plug in c sub 2, we would have negative c sub 0. We already had our 4 times 3. And again, from our uh, expression for c sub 2, we would also get a 2 times 1. And that's going to leave us with a positive c sub 0 over 4 factorial. All right, so it says c sub 4 is going to be c sub 0 over 4 factorial. Maybe let's uh, do at least one more. I'm going to find if we substitute n equals 3. If we substitute n equals 3, we would have c sub 5 equals negative c sub 3 over, again, if we plug in 3, we would have 5 times 4. You can do the same thing I just did and do a little 
substitution here. You can replace our c sub 3 with negative c1 divided by 3 times 2. And if we do that, I'm getting that we're left with c sub 1 over 5 factorial. Okay, so let's keep going here. Um, I'm going to, you can verify my arithmetic here. If we substitute in n equals 4, I'm getting that we get c sub 6 is going to be negative c sub 0 over 6 factorial. So notice basically what's happening. The signs are alternating, negative, positive, negative. We always have the c sub 0 in the numerator. And if it's c sub 2, hey, it's 2 factorial. c sub 4, it's 4 factorial. c sub 6, hey, it's 6 factorial, etc. So I think uh, the pattern is becoming pretty clear. Likewise, if we plug in n equals 5, I am getting that we have, uh, we'll get c sub 7, and let's see, I'm getting negative c sub 1 over 7 factorial. So basically the same thing's happening on the right side. It's alternating from negative, positive, negative. We've got c sub 1, and then whatever our index is, I'm getting that factorial. Okay, so now I'm going to express this just a little more compactly. So if n equals 2m, okay, so this is going to deal with the even indices, indices, notice we can write a sub 2m, that's going to be negative 1 raised to the m times, oops, I used, I used a here, I don't know why I used a, let me replace this with a, with a c here. Um, so at c sub 2m, that's going to be negative 1 raised to the m times c sub 0 over 2m factorial. And again, notice for our first case here, that's when m equals 1. This would be m equals 2. This would be m equals 3, etc. So that's going to take care of the alternating sign. Again, it's always there's a c sub 0 floating around in the numerator. And again, it says whatever, you know, whatever the index is, we're getting that factorial. That's exactly what's happening here. If it's 6, it's 6 factorial. If it's 4, it's 4 factorial, etc. If n equals 2m plus 1, so this is going to take care of the, the, odd, uh, the odd subscripts here, we would have that c sub 2m plus 1. That's going to be the same thing, negative 1 raised to the m. Instead of c sub 0, we're going to have c sub 1 now. And then we're going to have 2m plus 1 factorial. So again, you can check, you know, so my first example here, that's going to be m equals 1. This would be m equals 2. This would be m equals 3. So this is kind of the way that we can deal with this even odd stuff, is uh, we, can, we can rewrite it in terms of 2m or 2m plus 1. So this is a very common trick, so you may, uh, you may want to stop and think about this. If this, you know, sometimes I think this confuses people a little bit. But this is just the way that we deal with these even and odd indices. All right, so what do we get? Well, what we have now, so before we had that y equals n equals 0 to infinity of c sub n times x raised to the m. Well, now I'm going to break this up into the even and odd uh, components here. So we have n equals 0 to infinity, negative 1 to the m times c sub 0 over 2m factorial times x raised to the power of 2m. So this is going to take care of the even terms, or the even powers, is what this is doing. Plus, I'm going to have the series from n equals 0 to infinity of negative 1 raised to the m times c sub 1 over 2m plus 1 factorial, and again, I should be careful, I've got m's and n's, this is now going to be m, and this is going to be an m as well, sorry about that. Uh, so negative 1 to the m times c sub 1 divided by 2m plus 1 factorial, and that's going to be multiplied by x raised to the power of 2m plus 1, 
And this is just going to take care of the odd powers. Okay, so that's all we're doing there. Now, you could stop and say, hey, that's our solution, and that's perfectly valid. I'm going to make one more observation here, and the observation is the following. So, recall, we have ways to express sine and cosine using power series. Cosine of x, we can write that as m equals 0 to infinity, negative 1 raised to the m, times x raised to the 2m, all over 2m factorial. And also recall that sine x, we can write that as m equals 0 to infinity, negative 1 raised to the power of m, times x raised to the 2m plus 1 over 2m plus 1 factorial. And hey, conveniently, right, those are, those are present. We've got negative 1 raised to the m, x to the 2m over 2m factorial. So that's going to be exactly cosine x. And then we have negative 1 raised to the m times x to the 2m plus 1 over 2m plus 1 factorial. That's going to be exactly our sine x. And I could have always, you know, this is a constant c sub 0. I could have factored that. I could have factored that out front. Again, c sub 1 is a constant. I could have factored that out front as well. So what we're left with, we can even write a little more compactly. We can write this as c sub 0 times cosine x plus c sub 1 times sine x. And that's now going to be a solution to our initial differential equation using a power series.